A travel guide for visiting Osaka Castle in Osaka, Japan. I'm Chris. This is Topher. This is Yellow Productions. We do travel guides that are fun, informative, and entertaining. This is part of our series of videos on Osaka. You can find links in the description to more, part of our larger series of almost 100 videos on Japan. You'll find links to those in the description at the end of this video as well. And if this is your first time in the Yellow Productions, make sure to hit that subscribe button to not miss any of our future fun, informative, and entertaining travel videos. But in this video, we're going to be telling you everything you need to know to visit this castle, one of the biggest attractions in Japan. And uh, one of the coolest things about this castle is it's a huge complex. I mean, the complex is amazing. It's called Osaka Castle Park, and uh, it is like really the center of the city. Osaka was the first capital of Japan, and um, I mean, this is just, it's impressive to come here. The former palace isn't here anymore, but what people typically think of when they think of the castle, that building that I started with right there, uh, with the gold and the green, it's one of, it's one of Japan's best uh, castles, but it's the keep. That's essentially the fortification of it. So anyway, I'll take you up into the keep and I'll show you everything you need to know to get here and everything around this huge complex. All right, here we go. The Osaka Castle Park is very big, and so there's a number of different subway and train stations that serve it. In this video, we'll be starting at the Osaka Subway Morino Mia station. The JR Osaka Loop Line also has a station with the same name right next to the subway station. If you take the subway, you just go right out this staircase and you see Osaka Castle right there. The JR station is just across the street from the same intersection. Super easy. And visiting Osaka Castle, it's more than just the castle, but it's a whole park. They've got a map here that includes the whole complex. This is where you'd come in if you take my directions on the Morino Mia station. And uh, then there's a whole bunch of things to visit and do here. So let's check them out. Well, what if you don't want to walk around the castle? Well, you can take the Osaka Castle Road Train. 300 yen, and it'll take you on a little ride around the castle park grounds. And Chris, so let's say I want to ride that train. How do I ride it? Well, you would buy your ticket from a vending machine, of course, right here. 300 yen. Well, what if you don't want to take a train? What if you want to take a boat? Good news for you, they've got boats. They go 10 to 4.30 p.m. daily. This one's a little more expensive, 1,500 yen. You can pick it up a few places at the castle. What if you have a sudden craving for food or drink? The Japanese love convenience stores, and there's an outpost of Lawson Station in the castle grounds. Great food and drinks, all cheap in there. After about a three minute walk into the complex, you'll find the very big castle moat, and then a sign that tells you the castle is that way. And then to head up into the castle, well, you gotta scale the castle walls. Lucky for you, they've, uh, they've built a staircase to scale the castle walls, so you don't have to bring your rope ladder or anything. If you didn't get something to eat at Lawson and you're hungry, well, they've often got food vendors set up selling various Japanese treats. This one's selling takoyaki, which are basically octopus balls. It's octopus and dough on the outside. They're pretty good. If you've never had them, give them a try. Uh, over here, this one's pretty busy. Let's see what they've got. Ooh, this one has squid on a stick. A little more expensive, 600 yen. Right next to the squid is a stall selling sliced baked Japanese sweet potatoes in a cup. 400 yen. One of the things I really like about Osaka Castle is the immensity of the grounds. And there's also plenty of areas that you can get up to the castle walls and pretend you were one of the turrets looking out at uh, attackers in the moat or coming up the main walkway. It's pretty cool, this place is immense. This castle didn't just have one moat, it has two, an outer moat and an inner moat. At the second moat, uh, half of it's currently dry, but the other half of it is currently still wet. Just across the dry moat, there were three more food vendors, these in the form of food trucks. First one sells things on sticks, this one sells soft ice cream, and there's another food truck selling takoyaki. You'll find this quite a bit, and they are very friendly. Hi, takoyaki. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and now you'll find yourself at the main bridge entrance across the dry moat, but not so fast. There's a couple more things to see on this side. There's the martial arts training hall right here. There's uh, another food vendor. This one's more of the permanent variety. 
And in case you're wondering, I did finally succumb to one of the food vendors for the Imagawa Yaki. It's a essentially custard filled cake. It comes in red bean and some other varieties, 150 yen. Hmm. It's one of my favorite desserts in Japan. Typically sold at festivals. I love the custard taste. And they're delicious when they're hot and fresh right off the grill. Once you finish with your amagawayaki or other food, there's a small shrine right back here built in the 1800s. If you're in a rush, you can skip it, but if you've got some time, check it out. As you head up the bridge, you'll pass through the Sakuramon Gate. This gate is named Cherry Blossom Gate, likely after the row of cherry blossoms planted in front of it. If you want to know how I know that, well, there's lots of great English signage around this complex. This sign tells you about the really huge stones that were used right in front of the gate. These stones really are quite huge. If you take a look at it, this whole piece right here is one big stone. That's probably really difficult to bring here. As you pass those huge stones, the main tower is in view, but not so fast. There's one more attraction, this newly renovated Miraiza building. And I think it's kind of hilarious that the entrance sign lets you know that pictures are okay inside. The first floor is home to shops and restaurants, but I think the coolest shop is this one right here, Shinobiya. It has ninja samurai goods specialty store. You can buy a full suit of samurai armor just south of 2 million yen. They've even got some ninja games you can play for the kiddos. And if you need an ATM, you'll also find one right here, 7-Eleven ATM, which accepts cards from almost any country. The second floor is home to a sit-down restaurant, the Crossfield Restaurant, and their tea lounge. A nice, refined, comfortable seating area. And the third floor is home to a restaurant that is only open at dinner time, after 5 p.m but I do love the bonsai trees. I also should point out, if you're looking for clean restrooms in this building, they are the cleanest in the whole castle complex. Back out in front of that shopping mall, this is the site of the former palace of the castle. No longer here, but the main tower still is. This is the liveliest area of the complex. If you didn't have two million yen for that samurai outfit inside, you can get your picture taken outside for free. You can just wear it. Uh, you'll also find performers out here. This is just an exciting place to be. Okay, well now that we're finally here at the main tower, it's time to go in. I just want to point out a couple things first. This tower was built in 1931. The first tower was built in the 1500s. It burned down in a war. The second tower was built in the 1600s. It burned down by lightning strike. And this one was uh, rebuilt with donations by the citizens of Osaka. Uh, but before we can go in, we need to buy a admission ticket. There's a line over here, and of course, how do we buy a ticket? The way we buy a lot of things in Japan, we buy the admission ticket from a vending machine. Uh, 600 yen, and it's funny, you're watching my video, so you don't even need to know this, but they've got this thing that tells you, ticket machine here, if you have a other pass, you can pick it up here, and then just go through the entrance gate. Tickets are pretty easy, it's in English. Just put the button that says 600 yen, and uh, then you can, Put your money in here. And you'll get a ticket. And some change. As you come inside, you can pick up a brochure about the castle in various languages. I will take English. My Japanese is not so good. As you approach the front entrance to the keep, you'll find two lines. On the left, there's a line to take the elevator, and on the right, well, there's no line to go up the stairs. If you could go up the stairs, take the stairs. It is about eight floors. It doesn't take that long. The elevator only gets you up halfway anyway. You still have to take some stairs up, and that elevator line is pretty long. As you make your way up, there's various museum type exhibits. They don't really let you do video or pictures in most of them, so I'll just see you at the top, which I think is really the main thing to see here, and that is the top observatory of the keep. This level is open air but fenced in, but what I do really like is there's a break in the fence in the middle so you can take some clear pictures without having a fence in the middle of your pictures. Japanese really love their pictures and so they made it so you can get some nice pictures of Osaka. From here you can see all the immensity that is Osaka and they've even got little signs that'll tell you what the things in the distance are. In addition to the view, there's also a little but very busy gift shop up here. If you don't find any 
anything you want at this gift shop, there's a larger gift shop down at the main entrance level of the keep. Once you're done visiting the main tower and you want to go about your travels, there's plenty of signs that'll tell you how to get back to the train station. Uh, I would say go to a train station that you haven't been to yet because then you can see more of the complex. If you go to the JR Osaka Joe Koen station, then you can stop by the Joe Terrace Osaka place for food. Probably more shops there too. That's where I'm heading because I am hungry. And I think those shops are probably gonna be the restaurants, probably a little cheaper than the ones that were up here right in front of the castle. Those were mighty expensive. Well, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please click on this yellow ball right here to subscribe. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, links in the description below, or you might enjoy watching one of our other videos up here, up here, for more fun, informative, entertaining videos from Japan and beyond. All right, bye-bye.